When it comes to scenery to make your gaming tables immersive, you have a few options. You can buy ready built and painted scenery, you can buy card terrain, you can buy plastic terrain, you can 3D print stuff yourself. However, it does take time and also you need to want to get into 3D printing. You can even scratch build stuff, but again, it can be time consuming and maybe it's just a little more effort than you want to put in. Somewhere in the Venn diagram of all of this stuff is MDF scenery. It's relatively inexpensive, it's quick to assemble, and it's robust. Well, how about if your MDF scenery was not just the terrain, but the board itself too? That's where these kits from Uncertain Scenery come in. Uncertain Scenery sent me out these faraway modular game boards to take a look at. I received two of the Skirmish Tunnel T-Junction boards and two of the Skirmish Tunnel Straight boards. The kits come as flat MDF sheets of various thicknesses depending upon the parts, which you need to cut out from the frame yourself to build. This is easily done with a sharp knife on a cutting board, as unlike some other MDF kits I've used in the past, these have very few tabs holding the parts in place. I'd recommend going through all of the pieces and cutting them out, and then cleaning up any rough edges with a sharp knife or a bit of sandpaper. Now these kits come with some great assembly instructions included in the pack. There's no need to visit a website and find the instructions and then print them out. They're there in the pack for you to get started. I'd recommend just having a quick look over them before you start building to familiarize yourself with the parts and the build and then separating everything out into the bits you need for each step. When it comes to building, just make sure you have the right bits by checking that the letters or the numbers match up with the corresponding piece on the baseboard and then dry fit them at each stage. You then need to glue them together, either with some PVA glue or some wood glue. I tend to use wood glue for strength, however it can discolour the parts slightly, so if you're not planning to paint them up afterwards, this might be a consideration for you. I put the glue on the part, spread it out using an old craft brush, and then press it into place, tidying up any glue that squirts out of the joints before it dries. The quality of the laser cuts and the slots is excellent in these kits, so I've found there's no real need to hold things in place with elastic bands or with clips while they're drying. Now the floor parts for the upper level come in two pieces which have to be stuck together. So here I'd recommend getting them glued and then lie them flat with some weight on them until they're fully dried. Once everything's dry, you can fit those top pieces in place. Each board is 12 inches by 12 inches, meaning adding four together gives you a perfect two foot by two foot plane area, and of course you could add more if you want to go bigger. Part of the design that Uncertain Scenery have done is making these very clever connector clips, which slot into place between adjoining boards and hold them tightly in place. They slot into the holes, they lie flush with the surface, and it keeps everything stable during play. The beauty of these kits are that the floor sections can be either added or removed during your games so that you can play on multiple levels, and along with rearranging the orientation of the boards, this can give some aesthetically pleasing and varied gaming tables to play on. These boards also come with some frosted perspex sections, which you can add lighting behind to give some great effects. I'd advise leaving these out prior to painting, so remember to do that. Playing in the tunnels under the surface gives some very thematic elements to your games, and with a bit of mood lighting, you can make some great looking tables. One great thing about these sets is they're also gridded out in one inch squares, so they can be used for RPG games or maybe even board games, as well as tabletop miniature games, and the three inch by three inch cubes make it perfect for Dead Zone fans. Here, I've added some of my own dead zone terrain to the upper levels just to give an impression of how it can look, adding even more height to the board, and I think it makes a fantastic looking play area. I've been really impressed with the quality, the fit, and the design of these modular game boards. Visually, they look fantastic with the tunnel sections, and the removable floor sections add not only great access to the lower levels, but the steps give you access to get back up again, and they add some variability to your layouts. Storage wise, you can fit four of these boards comfortably into an IKEA Kallax shelf. And as you can see here, I've started to paint mine. So if you want to see a super fast way to get them looking effective, then drop me a comment on this video. 
I've put a link to Uncertain Scenery's website in the description of this video where you can check out not only these boards but also the full range of MDF scenery they make. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my video. I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon where you can pledge in support from as little as $2 a month and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses which will give you access to a private Discord server. It will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month and a number of other things including getting your name at the end of every video like these awesome folks who already support me now.